And we're back. So the let's see. Yes. The trailer makes it seem like one of these thrillers from around this time. Uh, Long Came a Spider um, kind of thing where, you know, you're, you're trying to solve a puzzle to... Yeah, it, and, and, you know, I get it. It's a difficult film to advertise. You know, I, I can imagine some of the frustration you know, in some of the viewers who left frustrated user reviews watch the trailer and, you know, instead of saying this was false advertising, they take it out on the movie itself. Now, uh, let's see, the cover and poster do not give too much away and, I mean, they do a fine enough job of selling the, the movie as much as they could, I feel like with just one picture and yeah um, so on Rotten Tomatoes this has an 85 percent uh, and on the tomato meter based on 137 reviews uh, so 116 of them were fresh the average rating was 7.50 out of 10 the uh, audience score is 68 percent based on over 10,000 ratings and the consensus Ray Fiennes is brilliant in this accomplished and haunting David Cronenberg film. And, yeah, the, the, um, the average audience score was 68... 3.6 uh, out of 5. And, yeah, the movie is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. On Metacritic, it has an 83 out of 100, based on 35 critic reviews, 34 positive and 1 mixed. The user score is 7.1 based on 43 ratings, 28 positive, 13 mixed, and 2 negative. And on IMDb, there are 223 user reviews, or 178 without spoilers. I read all of them. Normally, I just read the top voted 100, but when there's that few. And of all 223, 15 gave it 1 out of 10, 9 gave it 2, 9 gave it 3. 4 gave it 4, 17 gave it 5. I can understand a 5. This is this is a movie that if it's just not really for you, but you can respect, you know what, there's some good filmmaking here. This is, this is more interesting than a lot of other movies giving it a 5. I, I completely get that. Um, 15 gave it 6, 31 gave it 7, 36 gave it 8, 33 gave it 9, 25 gave it 10. So there are a significant chunk of people who absolutely loved the movie or maybe just gave it a really high rating because they hated that it was so low rated by a number of other people and that brings us to the uh, yeah, not user external reviews there are yeah 58 links uh, 58 of the 115 links worked and were in English and yeah, the the overall the, the average on IMDb is six point eight based on thirty nine thousand user votes, and yeah, twenty eight point six percent gave it seven, twenty point six gave it eight, eighteen point five gave it six, eight point seven gave it five, six point one gave it ten, uh, three point seven gave it four. 2.1 gave it 3, 2.0 gave it 1, 1. 1.4 gave it 2. So, so yeah, you know, again, number of people not fans, but some people absolutely love it. And that brings us to, yeah, so this won 13 awards and was nominated for 25. And let's see. Yeah, so several of the, yeah, Miranda Richardson was nominated for several awards, which makes a ton of sense. She does amazing work here. And the sound editing got, uh, let's see, oh, uh, actually won, as far as I can tell. And, yeah, uh, Cronenberg for director, it got for editing, 
assistant director, location manager. Yeah, it got for a lot of different aspects of production. And yeah. Um, So yeah, this the the um, yeah, it's special effects. I am there. There are very very few special effects in this. There there um, and and the violence. There's a little bit of violence, but it tends to be implied, not lingered on. Um, honestly, if you if you watch this, you might be forgiven for thinking you're you're seeing a um, TV cut or something like a, where they cut out the the harsh stuff. You know, I, I have it on DVD, so I know for a fact it is the complete. You know, but you know, bought bought from the same place that I bought my completely uncensored video drum DVD, for example. So, um. Yeah, there's not a lot of special effects, and I think they would have distracted. I don't think they're distracting in Video Drum on the Fly. There they really work, but here it, it isn't. And yeah, the the very there's there's not a lot of violence, and that means and and again, I love that there is a lot of violence in a lot of Cronenberg work because it it works. You know, he's he's exploring violent things so it just feels appropriate to have to, to show uh, a lot of violence but this has very little violence and because of it whenever there is violence it hits like a hammer it's it's really really effective to, to in a, in a way that is you know yeah anyway and the uh, yeah there's some sexual material um in my opinion, it's all it it serves the the themes. It's not like just there to to like get you know. I I'm I don't think that Cronenberg has ever uh, what's the word put in in his in one of his movies some some sex and violence just you know, to attract the audience or something. And and this is yet another case where it he didn't. Um, yeah, so the the DVD that I have at least uh, features 20 minutes of behind the scenes, four trailers, including one for this, cast and crew bios. And yeah, uh, it's it's good, like, it's not the kind of thing where, like, it's not going to, change your life, you know, if it's, if the DVD is not extremely expensive, if it's not much more expensive than one that is just bare bones, yeah, I think it is worth it, but, you know, this is not like, you know, you know, this is nothing compared to, like, I, I, the, um, there's a, at least one release of, of his The Fly that has, like, the script and hours worth of documentary stuff and a commentary track and all kinds of things you know this is this is much much less than than that so let's see yeah uh, I rate this eight webs of mystery unraveling out of ten and yeah the movie absolutely holds up like um, it's wild to think it's it's 21 years old and I am 18 years older now than I was when I first watched it and and yeah it's you know, there are some older movies, especially ones that deal with misogyny, that if you try to sit down and watch them today, it's like, oh my god, this is unbearable. You know, I, I don't, I can't, I don't think I'll ever be able to sit through the entirety of the James Cameron True Lies, the show easily, but not the movie, because of all the misogyny and racism, you know. And, and that movie came out, what, eight years before this one? So, you know, it's not like nothing from that time. Is, yeah. Um, I, th I think it's a movie that, you know, I, I, I do think it deserved, but like, a number of people who love it have found it, and that's great. 
but there's like it, it would be great if there were way more user reviews for example the let's see and the oh right and yeah um I yeah before before doing this video I found you know I I searched here on YouTube you know I found the the theatrical trailer two review analysis one documentary uh, let's see a commentary track and two interviews you know that's that's way too little for such an accomplished movie you know and I think yeah I I hope that in the future. It will get a reappraisal by the general public, and that, yeah, it will be thought of as much. Uh, what's the word? It will be appreciated more. Now, uh, let's see. So, so yes, um, my worst to best ranking, now including this movie. So yeah, The Brood, The Dead Zone, Naked Lunch, Eastern Promises, Scanners, Spider, History of Violence, Dangerous, A Dangerous Method, Existence, The Fly, and Videodrome. Which, yeah, in my opinion, Fly beats Spider. In this case, at least. And yeah, that's, that's it for uh, the review. So if... Yeah, please do not watch any further before watching the movie itself. And let's see, that brings us. Huh. Well, that's that's a thing. I completely. Okay, never mind. Um, yes. So, starting with notes taken while watching. And as usual, they are on paper. So, yeah, we open on Rorschach tests on, you know, on the walls, and I appreciate how, like, it kind of looks like water damage, you know, to underline this is not a wonderful place to live. And, let's see, yeah, Spider's the last person to leave the train, and no one really pays attention to him. And... that yeah and and you know we we see spider walking you know as he gets to the halfway house he picks up what other people throw out you know he's he's he collects these small little things that he can make things out of and let's see Yeah, and and he meets. Yeah, he he gets to the halfway house, and the yeah meets Miss Wilkinson, and the, um crap I forgot his name I'll have it momentarily. Um, Terence. You know, says you know about scorpions, don't you? Ah, you looked like someone from Africa. Uh, you know, and he mentions you know one day a man stepped into his shoe, not knowing there was a scorpion down there. It took him seventeen hours to die. And you know, on on its surface, that sounds like just you know, it's it's a it is a interesting thing to say to someone you literally just met um yes and you know at at first it sounds like oh what a what a random bit of dialogue but by the end of the movie you realize spider killed his mother with gas and you know that didn't take 7 hours 17 hours but it wasn't immediate, and it, it does seem like she slept. She she died in her sleep, you know. So that's nice at least. But yeah, um, let's see. 
And yeah, uh, we very quickly get a sense that Miss Wilkinson lacks the virtues of both tolerance and patience. Uh, you know, basically everything has to go on her timetable. You have, to, you know, she has very little patience for um, um, Spider, and you know, she tries to undress him for the bath without it. Like just, you know, like Im imagine doing that with someone that you didn't think was like mentally ill. Imagine doing that with some point, you know, anyone else. You'd ask first. You'd be like, would you be okay with if I did this? But no, you know, because in her mind, he's just mentally ill, so he doesn't deserve to be treated as a human being. And she actually gets annoyed over the, the fact that he, you know, the... the yeah, the fact that he resists when she tries to take his clothes off. And in general, it seems to get annoyed over, over absolutely nothing. Um, so again, you know, this is this was true. In some places it is still true, but a, a lot of places they've tried to, to improve mental health care. Now, let's see. And, and yeah, we see Spider trying to figure out where to hide the diary. You know, he feels confident that if he doesn't hide it, he won't be able to keep it, you know. Which, right, like, you know, it's it's your living area. You know, you're not, like, falling asleep in public. Then you might get robbed. But, like, but that's how paranoid he is. And, and you can understand why. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, as he's lying there in bed, he repeats to himself the directions... I'm not 100% certain if that's to where his mother was buried or if it was to his home, but, you know, one, he's, he's, he's not focusing on now, he's focusing on his childhood. And he's, he's stuck in his childhood. He can't move past it. And again, we understand why, but it's just, it's one of the first things we learn about him. Once he starts talking, that's what he talks about. And, uh, yeah, we see, you know, there's no expectation of privacy. She doesn't, like, knock before opening his door. And, uh, you know, let's see. Right, and, and Terrence expresses, you know, he, he says, you know, the world outside is loud. This place is an island, but is ruled by a wicked queen. Which, you know, we can understand where he's coming from. And, you know, then then Wilkinson freaks out over, oh, why are you wearing four shirts? And I'm like, if he finds it comfortable, why do you care? Let's see. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and Spider goes to where he believes his mother was buried... And, you know, he goes to this, like, uh, a coffee shop or something. I really appreciate it. We see this place twice. Um, I, is it the halfway house? I, I guess, I guess, it, anyway, my point is, we don't see him interact with anyone. We don't even see, like, someone take his order or something. Like, he's drinking coffee. He's, he's having some coffee with his sugar. So, clearly, at some point... Someone, you know, took his order, brought him some coffee, but we don't see it because he's living in his own world. Let's see, and and yeah, you know, he sees this painting of nature, and they do such a great job. Like, I mean, they basically must have painted it after finding the location, because the location, you know, it cuts to him and and two other men and you know like this is clearly the past it's not he's not imagining his future he never does that it's, you know so so like was this the asylum and it's like no there's no way the asylum looked this nice you know th there's no they there's no way they were allowed some such a positive experience in an asylum back then um so so yeah the the you know he sees this nature and he's he's able to imagine being there and you know it's also it's a it's a peek into the it's into into his nature into the fact that he 
he has a very vivid imagination. And it's actually yeah, it's 24 minutes in before we actually see his his childhood. And yeah, you know, his his mother sends him to to pick up his father which is like I don't think he can carry him all the way, but okay. And you know, he goes to the pub and I really appreciate like the the prostitutes there are just completely like there's no Yeah, I'll I'll get more into it later, but just from right away they they don't they're not treated as human beings with like personalities and such. They're essentially if this was a fairy tale, they wouldn't be people. They'd be like snakes or or some kind of or a, or a dragon, a three-headed dragon maybe. You know, they they're not you know, adult spider can't relate to them. Child spider has no chance whatsoever of relating to them. Let's see. And I, I really admire, like, they did a great job. They really do feel completely foreign and alien, you know. Like, we're seeing it through the perspective of someone who's struggling with his heterosexuality. It's, it's, uh, yeah, his sexuality. He is straight, and he's struggling with his sexuality. And that's why he is, you know... Like, they don't seem at all appealing. Like, one of them even flashes him, and it's completely unappealing looking, you know. Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, um, the father does come home, and they're eating, and Spider accidentally, like, you know, who hasn't? He, you know, he's he's sitting there with, with the knife and fork, and he accidentally, you know, the, the knife goes directly against the the plate so it makes this this like unpleasant noise and and his mother says don't don't yell at him you know don't you dare say something or something like that and it's like in, you know just from right away we get a very positive impression of the mother you know she's the the you know, it's very obvious that Spider did not mean to do it, so, you know, most audiences are going to be like, he doesn't deserve to get yelled at. He didn't mean to do it, you know. Like, if he was sitting there doing it to bother them, then it's like, okay, you know, maybe don't, I don't know if you want to yell at him, but tell him to stop, at the very least. And, yeah, we get the, you know, um, Spider wants, uh, you know, his, his mother talks about spider webs. And, you know, we get this, you know, and she says, you know, the spider had no more silk to spin, so she died, worn and empty. And you get, you can tell that's how she feels, you know, that's, you know, she feels like her life is over, you know, she, she, like, this was not what she dreamed of when she was young, it was younger, when she was a child, she didn't think, ah. Oh, God, I hope I'll grow up and one day I'll marry a guy who barely looks at me and goes out drinking every night. That's not, you know, so later when we see her, like, dress sexy to appeal to him, you know, that's her trying to take back control. That's her trying to bring life back to the relationship because she feels it's dead. And, yeah, on multiple occasions they leave Spider alone in the house when it's obvious he's much too young you know, he, he needs a babysitter. He can't be alone in the house at that age, but they can't afford one. And, yeah, we meet Yvonne. Ah, crap. I forget her name. Okay, I'm just going to go with Yvonne. Her last name, I forget. But, yeah, um, and we see, you know, yeah, basically the, the prostitutes are given no humanity. All they ever do is laugh in this unpleasant, like, it. you know, you know how laughter... It can be, like, really appealing. You know, I watch a lot of Drawfee. The way they laugh is just so endearing. You can't help but smile or laugh along with them. But here, it's this, like, it's, uh, it just sounds so awful. You know, it, it's it's like a mocking laughter. It's it's just, it, it sounds worse than, than Spider accidentally cutting the knife across the, the plate, you know. All they do is this mocking laughter and then talk about sex, you know, and they're constantly like, 
you know, basically, uh, uh, crap, what's the word? There's a specific word for it. Emasculating men. You know, they're constantly talking about, you know, this guy had a really small dick. Let's see. And, and that is, you know, a, a lot of men imagine, you know, sex workers like this, you know. Let's see. And, you know, Im imagining that the ev everything about them is sex. You know, they, they don't have lives outside of that, which, you know, anyone who's actually encountered a sex... Like, I, I don't think I know any in real life, if I do, they've kept the secret, but, you know, I've seen a bunch here on YouTube, and they're like, no, they're, they're human beings. Like, they're just like, you know, just like everybody else. They just have a job that a lot of people think shouldn't be a job, that you should only do that if you're married kind of thing. You know, but but yeah, a, a lot of men, when they think of prostitutes, the, the thing they, they're worried about is that a prostitute will talk about their size behind their back and that kind of thing. Let's see. And... Yeah, and, and pretty quickly after we start seeing Spider's childhood, we start seeing Spider imagine things that clearly he didn't see. Like, he couldn't possibly have known what his parents' date at the pub was like. He can't possibly have known if Bill approached Yvonne, who, you know, by the end of the movie, it becomes clear, like, Yvonne doesn't exist. The, the, you know, there's a sex worker that his that, that flashed him and, you know... She was at the pub where his father sometimes goes, so he imagines, oh, they, they hooked up, kind of thing, you know, but, yeah, um, as I'm sure you've realized by the end of watching the movie, which I do hope you did before getting to this part of the video, Yvonne is played by the, the Miranda Richardson, who also plays Miss Clegg, Mrs., whatever, Spider's mother, so... The, the, you know, it is, it is him struggling with his mother's sexuality. And, let's see. Yeah, and then we get to, yeah, we, we go back to this nature place that they were. And both men are talking about sex and they're being very misogynistic you know and like just yeah you know it's it's very clear that spider himself never encountered someone who could give him a healthy impression of sexuality you know i um recently i uh, i watched an excellent khadija mbawe video uh let's see can i find it Khadija, let's see, the video was entitled Celebrity Self-Sexualization and You, I'll probably just put, I'll put the link in the description box if my mouse can stop freaking out for two seconds, there we go, and the, yeah, tried replacing the mouse, made it worse, so here we are. Yeah, the the um, the thing I wanted to get to was in that video she talks. Um, it's not. Yeah, she's interviewing a person who's who mention. Uh, um, yeah, who mentions for a lot of people, sex is like a predator prey relationship. You know, men desire sex like predator, and women are sex or give sex, or they're the the prey. And I'm, I'm, yeah, this is something I've, I 100% I, I agree. That is, there's a lot of people who see it that way. Um, I've, I've been noticing that in media for, for well over a decade now, that there's a lot of, of that perception. And that's very much what you see, you know, yeah, everyone who talks to, to Spider about sex talks about it like that, you know. There, there are sexual women, like Yvonne, who are awful, and then there's 
proper women who are like his mother. There's also this Madonna mistress thing. Um, let's see. Did I put in... Ah. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if in the... I might talk some about that in the in the next section, but but yeah. Let's see the um Yeah, and you know, Yvonne and, and Bill are together and like Yvonne has nothing like interesting or deep to say. She talks about sex, the the busted toilet, how Bill is her favorite name, and that's it. You know, there's no other you know, like, uh, Spider's mother is much more appealing to us. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, and we go back to the, the puzzle, and he struggles with it, so he, he gets really angry and, and throws the, the pieces on the floor. And, you know, Wilkinson treats him like a misbehaving child instead of trying to say, you know, oh, were, were you upset? Do you, do you need to talk? You know, she's just like, you're gonna, you're gonna pick those pieces up, yourself, you know. And then we get the thing about the, the gas oven, which I think there was some, I, I feel like I read someone say, you know, there's, like, how could he possibly know the, how could, how could Terrence know that the, um, that this guy dis changed his mind about, uh, you know, suicide once his head was already inside the, the gas oven. Like, unless he was there or something, in which case it's like, why didn't you try to stop the guy from, you know, it, it so it's a very, you know, and, and again, you know, it puts in our mind, you know, a slow death through, through this kind of thing. You know, we, we, yeah, we keep getting gradually closer, you know, and I feel like it's probably not that these are the only things that Terrence says to Spider at all, like, it feels like he's, I get the sense he talks a lot, <laughs> no offense, but the, yeah, he's, the things that, that we see in the movie are when he criticizes Wilkinson, and when he talks about slow death from, you know, first it's a scorpion, now it's it's gas, and, and later we also see, you know, the massive gas plant, and, you know, at one point, Spider is, like, terrified that he's smelling gas, so he has to protect himself, and, of course, you know, by the end of the movie, you realize, well, he's been thinking about his mother dying from gas since he was a child. He's, he's struggling to, to deal with that. You know, and the, and the ending... You know he's still he's still doing it. he's still imagining every woman is Yvonne and trying to kill them because he can't you know any woman that isn't his mother he feels like is a threat to his to his mother and to his mother's relationship to him and to his father you know so. He feels, in his mind, killing Wilkinson is self-defense, you know, otherwise she's going to go out and kill someone else, you know, you can, we can understand how he got there while still realizing, I mean, that's not, you can't, no, you need help, you know. Let's see. Right, and, and when um, Yvonne and Bill have sex, she says, you fixed my pipes, I have sex with you, you know, so it's transactional, which is, you know, and, and yeah, sex work, there is a transactional aspect there, but, like, the, the yeah, I guess it's probably, it's, it's because, you know, Spider, like many others, feels that sex should not be transactional that that's inherently a wrong thing for uh, you know that that sex is something between a married man and a married um, yeah man and woman who are married to each other let's see and yeah and and you know um 
Spider's mother says, you know, I'm going out to to meet your father. Right? Actually, I don't I don't think I took a note of it, but uh, uh, here on the paper. But I did want to point out, you know, like Spider's mother wasn't trying to get caught by him. She she was trying to, you know, try on the the dress by herself, you know. But when she sees him, she doesn't think that he's going to think that there's something wrong with it, kind of thing, you know. But he can't, you know. It's it's there's cognitive dissonance for him because to him his mother is pure. You know, it's it, it's it's the only time he runs away from his mother where he realizes that's his mother. Any other time where he runs away, it's because he thinks his mother has been replaced by Ivan. And I really love the the cut that Ivan enters a room and then it cuts to his mother entering a room. You know, the first time you watch it, you might not pick up on it, but rewatching it knowing they're the same person and not just, you know, oh, they look a lot alike, you know. I really appreciate the props to the makeup department. The the disgusting teeth on Yvonne are 100% appropriate and, and just like every time she smiles, it's wrong. You know, you don't want to see her smile, which is like, it sounds like an, why would you not want to see her smile, you know, but I, they they did an incredible job on that, and and that is of course you know some some poor people who have not had money for proper you know dental you know end up looking like that. And the bartender is probably the only woman that you know we get an empathetic portrayal of other than the pure mother. And let's see. Yeah, there's not actually a huge amount of the film left when uh, Spider imagines his mother dying and, and being buried. And Yvonne is so reprehensible, she actually laughs when Bill hits his wife in the face with a shovel. Like, just, like, it's not a necessary evil. She's taking pleasure in it, you know. It's, she's like a parasite, basically. You know, she's she might she, she, you know she lures you in and then she takes and and destroys and kills, you know, and yeah, she she also laughs when they when they bury her and she pours some liquor down to you know, and then Bill laughs, you know, her press Yvonne is making Bill a more unpleasant person, you know, it's not that. You know his job leaves him miserable, and and he and um, his wife's sexuality are so repressed. No, you know, in 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 Spider's mind, everything bad about Dad comes from that pub. It comes from those sex workers and the beer and this whole you know. And I I really appreciate how like it feels like a violation. It feels wrong when Spider sees Yvonne in his mother's bed. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know we we get a brief glimpse of the asylum. We don't see very much of the asylum. Um, but yeah, we see you know one guy destroyed the the glass. Um, you know, and, and he's got, like, a shard, and he's threatening, and, you know, his fingers have been cut because he's holding on, you know, the, the, let's see, yeah, you know, not, not on purpose, and, you know, he keeps saying, don't, don't you dare call me a Spaniard, and, and the, you know, the guy working there tries to calmly say, Nobody's saying you're a Spaniard, you know, and hearing that, you know, he doesn't say, oh, okay, sure, then we're good, uh, have the glass back, no, he's, he's like, how dare you be so nonchalant, you know, don't come here being so nonchalant, you know, because that's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very realistic, um, yeah, sad, but realistic. And, yeah, Spider, like, imagines cutting himself, but he does give back the glass, which, you know, all the shards now, 
make up a spider's, you know, or, yeah, look like a spider's web, which is great. Detail. You know, like like a spider's web, the movie is intricate and, you know, you, it, you can only appreciate the whole thing when you take a step back. So it's a really great. And I can imagine the book as well. And, yeah, we see someone else living where Spider did as a kid. And, you know, this mother seems a lot happier than his mother was. You know, things may have improved in the in the time in between. And, yeah, it's actually, we're 62 minutes in to a 90 win, 91, not cutting in credits, minute movie before Yvonne and Spider are both in Spider's home and, like, you know, talking and, and, yeah. And, like, you know, within just a few seconds, like, at first she's just saying, oh, you're such a weird kid. But then she says, you know, yes, we killed your mother. You know, and, and once you've watched the entire thing, you realize that didn't, you know, she didn't say that. But, you know, he imagined... He's, he feels so confident that that is what happened that he actually imagines her confessing to it. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and, you know, he actually runs away from home and imagines his father saying, don't bother coming back, which, you know, by the end of the movie we realize his father wasn't that bad of a guy, you know. I don't think he said that. He did, but that's what Spider imagined, you know. And yeah, you know, Bill actually finds Spider, calls him Dennis. It's the only time in the entire movie where he's referred to as Dennis, you know, which is, you know, that's a it's a it's a way of in in you know, here in Denmark, we we use people's first names all the time, but I know in Britain, in England, they do, you know, if you're strangers or it's like there's a power dynamic, power, power imbalance, then you're supposed to say Mr. or Mrs. and then the last name. So him saying Dennis, you know, he's, he's not calling him boy or brat or something. He's saying, Dennis, what's wrong? You know, he's, he is trying to understand. He is actually worried. You know, talking to Spider, trying to understand what's going on. And, you know, he says, that woman is not my mother. And and Bill says, ah, oh, this again. Okay, who is she then? And, you know, Spider responds, a tart. And it's important to remember, at that point, Bill isn't hearing, you know, you, you killed mom and replaced her with a tart. He's hearing, your wife, my mother, is a tart. You know, which is like, that. that's so obviously he becomes angry. And let's see. And, you know, he points out, you know, you're, you're by yourself too much. You need friends. And that is absolutely, that is, you know, the problem. That, it's part of the problem. It would be, uh, yeah. And... Uh, let's see. Right, and yes, so Wilkins now appears as Yvonne. So, you know you know that song, I'm Every Woman? It's about, it was actually about Yvonne. And let's see. Yeah, you know, but basically, it's a, it's a visual representation of Spider rejecting female sexuality, especially in his mother, and connecting female sexuality to something bad. And, yeah, so 72 minutes in, you know, he's gathering rope and string to, to kill. And, yeah, he man, you know, he steals the keys. And, you know, he's almost caught with the keys, and she's, you know trying to find them on his person and you know yeah he go you know he finds the Yvonne's fur and and smells it which you know again there's this you know is it is it a sex thing or is it that he thinks you know this is 
this is the fur of a killer. You know, it's it's some of both. And yeah, he finds these tools that he's going to use as weapons. And yeah, goes to where she is in in bed and yeah, you know, the, he gets very close to her. And it's like, is he looking to hurt her, or is it like a sexual thing? Because, like, notice the way that he does. You know, he's not like getting, you know, the the what's this? Uh, um, he's not getting ready to. You know, he he holds the things very close to her face, and his face is very close to her face. So there is a, you know, on on some level, he does want to have a sexual relationship with a woman, but he feels like that's betraying his mother. Let's see. And yeah, we're 85 minutes in before the yeah. Then we see Yvonne and Bill come home, and I like the detail that Yvonne actually drinks the same drink that isn't quite you know I forget what it was, but it contained orange juice. So it's it has a very distinct the, the kind of tangy orange you know color. Several times when we see Spider watch her. To, you know, with with a drink in her hand, it's actually after it's um, yes, after he thinks that she's replaced his mother. So that's a another little subtle hint that in reality that is still his mother. You know, it is, and she doesn't like to drink. She doesn't like to get drunk at least. And yeah, and we see the the string. You know, flick the the gas knob thing and let's see yeah and 80 88 and a half minutes we see the dead body of the mother not of Yvonne you know Bill carries her out and we see you know that's that's clearly his mother's face that's not Yvonne and you know to the and and it cuts back to him in bed and we see no it's it's Wilkinson it's not Yvonne and yeah, you know he's taken to the asylum. Uh, you know both after almost hurting Wilkins, and as a kid. You know and and yeah, just it's it's a. You know the ending really hits you like a punch in the gut, and it just yeah, it's it's yeah, absolutely amazing. Now, there we go. So, yes, that brings us to the final section, notes taken before watching. So, uh, yeah, IMDb Trivia Notes. Spider's difficulty with his family history is a real psychological syndrome called the Capgrass Delusion. Persons afflicted with the syndrome are convinced that a person close to them has been replaced by an identical-looking imposter. And, let's see. And... You know, uh, it's the same thing that the, um, there's this excellent short story by Philip K. Dick called The Father Thing. That's, uh, yeah, same uh, basic idea. Let's see, and... Right, and, and yeah, one um, one user says, Ray finds mumbles throughout the entire film, not one coherent sentence. As if that's supposed to be a weakness of the film, I already mentioned. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i not going to go off on a, on a thing. I already talked about. Yes, so, um, yeah, so some critic quotes. Spider is a film that left me feeling quite cold initially, not nearly as weird as David Cronenberg's early work. Spider is a more reserved film with an hour and a half Ray finds exclusively mumbling. He has a few lines, but mostly just mumbles those two. Thus, it was a hard film to pin down and truly wring enjoyment out of from beginning to end. However, the finale is what cements this as a brilliant work. Far more reserved and grounded than Cronenberg's known for, Spiro's exploration of the mind of a broken man. Why is he forced to live out his days in an asylum after being seemingly fine as a child? Well, Cronenberg gives you the unexpected answer in a finale that elevates the entire film into being a very good character study. Let's see, and 
I didn't find it very surprising that the blonde woman was still his mother. I did find it surprising when he killed her with the gas from the stove. I don't know if surprised is the word I'm looking for. Affected by, perhaps that's closer. I felt a lot when he finally sees that his father didn't kill his mother, but that his father and his mother were finally getting along. With his imagination and a strange mind, he imagined his father killing his mother and being out of the jail or hospital where he came from isn't a good choice for him. He tells the other people in the house that he won't be there long, that he will be out soon. Cronenberg doesn't even try to make us believe that for one moment. Spider is so atmospheric and grabs you that the slow pace really just helps with the descent into Spider's mind. Agreed. This is probably the best done Cronenberg film I have seen. A tantalizing triptych from Miranda Richardson playing Spider's mother, as well as his delusional hallucinations and a convincing portrayal of the isolation of mental illness by Fines. Let's see, and... I gotta say, the following really surprised me when I read it. What's unfortunate is so many critics are discussing this film as one about schizophrenia, which it really isn't, nor was it meant to be. As it turns out, it is an excellent representation of the schizophrenic experience, but Cronenberg intended it to be representational of the human condition, with all its mysteries, uncertainties, and existential anxieties. What was never an uncertainty, however, is Cronenberg's skillful mastery of delivering genius. Now, let's see... Right, one user review claimed that the reason that the movie takes us into his past is to show us the start of Spider's mental condition. Since it doesn't tell us, tell us what caused it, the movie is a failure. I completely disagree. The reason it takes us back is to show us the trauma that he suffered and how his mental illness uh, is trying to cope with it. I think we watch too many Hollywood movies. Not everything that goes into the past is about how something started. It's just about something significant happened in the past. The movie isn't trying to turn Spider into something for us to gawk at. We're supposed to empathize with him. The movie's told from his point of view, telling us how some schizophrenics perceive the world around them. Uh, in an interview, Gabriel Byrne says basically his character has to be played in a very specific way, so that when you watch the entire movie, his character still does make sense, even though you now learnt something about him that's completely different from what you knew earlier. And it's absolutely true. Like, it's... Like, if you've only watched it once, you know, it deserves watching again just to appreciate Gabriel Byrne treading that fine line. Because usually, like, Yvonne is entirely fictional. Uh, if she's saying something, it's imagined by Spider. Uh, she didn't. She doesn't even exist, you know. The, the person that he thinks, it, it, you know, it, she's a... Yvonne is this combination of the the three prostitutes that he experiences for like three seconds you know that's not their entire uh, 30 seconds whatever it's not their entirety you know that's not what they're you know they're at, they're at a pub they're drunk you know they're acting like drunk people at a pub but you know you know they, they shouldn't be flashing a child obviously but it's that doesn't mean that they're just completely inhuman you know uh, but but yeah that's one part and the other part is his mother actually, you know, liking, you know, her getting along with her her husband again, you know, or again, possibly for the first time, you know. So, so, so yeah, you know, everything about Yvonne is in Spider's mind. But Gabriel Byrne's character, Bill, you know, like, when when he's alone with Yvonne, it's in Spider's mind. And we, you know, we can desu deduce that because, you know, he wasn't there. How could how could Spider possibly know what went down? You know, he didn't he didn't follow his father and see this. He's just imagining it. He's he's sitting at home by himself, imagining these awful things about his father and this sex worker that he met for 30 seconds and judges her based on those 30 seconds and everything bad that he hears about sexuality. And the... Um, but, but yeah, you know, Bill, like, there's a lot of things where when you watch it the second time, you realize, oh, he's not actually, he's not a bad guy. He's, you know, let's see. And, you know, it also, the before we meet Bill, the first thing we learn about him is that, you know, um, um, his wife, Spider's mother, says, you know, dinner, go get your father at the pub, tell him dinner's on the table, but dinner's not on the table, it will be when you get him back, you know, so, 
at the time, she does not have a very high opinion of Bill. She's like, he's down there getting drunk again, you know. And clearly, you know, Spider spends more time with his mother than he does with his father, and he doesn't really have friends. So when his mother expresses something, it means a lot to Spider. So in his mind, you know, probably not the only thing, probably also his own experiences with Bill, but he's not... You know, part of it is also just that, that a lot of men struggle to deal with emotions. You know, we're not really socialized to. I'm fortunate enough, you know, when I was a kid, I was encouraged to feel my feelings. You know, both of my parents felt that that was good. You know, but a lot of little boys are not taught that. They're, they're taught that boys feeling things is bad. That means you're like a girl, and that's bad. You know, so... Yeah, Bill, you know, he's frustrated about his work. He's frustrated about this, you know, yeah, like, you know, it's it's noteworthy. We never see him at work. We never, you know, there's a, there's a hallucination. And, it, you know, that's where he meets Yvonne. But we don't actually see it from his own perspective. You know, Spider never goes with him to, to work. So it is basically just, uh, you know, but yeah, b based on, you know, the couple of times the Bill does try, you know, he sits down with Spider and he's like, what's wrong, Dennis? You know, he has it in him to be a good person. It's just that he's, frust he's frustrated, you know. Now, let's see. Yeah, so some people say that the movie's twist is too easy to figure out for the viewer. I think that it's like a classic Greek tragedy. We know where things are going. We're powerless to stop it. It's not... we really got to get over this obsession with everything having to be a twist in fiction. Like, just because you saw it coming doesn't mean that that's bad writing. Uh, let's see. At the end of the movie, it becomes clear to the audience and the authorities that Spider should still be an institution for the safety of those around him. I'm really glad this is not one of those movies that claim that when psychiatrists and such say that it's fine to release a patient, that they're likely wrong, the patient is still a danger for others. Because of this earlier point in the movie, it's made clear they don't actually think he's ready to be discharged. They just need the extra bed. They don't think... You know, it's not that it's impossible for mental health patients to get better, it's that the people who control budgets and such don't care about the patients. And let's see, right, so the YouTube commentary track, Cronenberg uh, himself, let's see, oh, right, right, he actually brings up, you know, maybe, you know, is Spider right to believe he killed his mom? Maybe she suicided, which, you know, gas oven. Maybe she left. A lot of kids blame themselves when their parents separate. And, yeah, I gotta say, I didn't even, I didn't realize that until he said it. But, yeah, it's, it is possible. Uh, uh, yeah. So, that is it for the video. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite Cronenberg movie? Uh, you know, let's see... Yeah, what, what is the, who do you think, which of the actors do you think is the, the best performance here? Because it really is, like, I don't know if I can, you know, Ray Fiennes, Gabriel Byrne, and Miranda Richardson, I don't know if I can say which one of them does the very best, because all three of them have a real challenge, and all of them meet it. It's just incredible. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel. Once you want more links to stuff like relevant playlists, they suggest a video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. One talking about the most recent episode. Uh, let's see, I've gotten two of Screen Queens, uh, The Bear. And, you know, currently also a weekly video about an, a bit of animated Star Wars. I do a daily video talking about my thoughts on an episode of the 1992 animated X-Men show. Recently, we've been thoughts videos saying about very similar to this one. In other words, if you're more videos like this, you're luck. You can check out my back channel, which is next week. Hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.